is part three of kennel training or crate training. So this is Breeze. She's a, a future service dog and we're just working on her getting nice and calm in the kennel. She's had some work with this as you can see. She's, she's pretty bad with, about doing this. Um, you want to make sure that your dog can handle being in the kennel while you're right here. Okay, so you, you know, just walking around the kennel, walking over, be natural. Don't stand there and stare at him. You wanna like pick up some books or move a pillow or, or just kind of move around the room. It, when the puppy is calm, if you're over here facing this way and that puppy's calm, good. And you're gonna go back and you're gonna reward that puppy for being relaxed and calm. The next part of this, don't, first of all, don't rush this. I don't know how long this is gonna take, but you, you have a means of using your puppy playpen and his litter box and, and all of that. I normally start crate training at 11 or 12 weeks of age. Before that, I don't do it. I think there's a separation issue. Uh, they've been just pulled away from their litter, pulled away from their mama, and the last thing that they need is to be pulled away from you. So I think it's important for them to feel secure and not to feel isolated. 11 or 12 weeks of age is, is early enough to start this. Once they're fairly calm in the kennel with you being right here, you need to start playing what we call peekaboo. And that is allowing the dog to understand, I'm leaving, but I'm coming right back. Just like in babies, when you disappear, they think you're gone forever. So when you leave the room with a young puppy, he thinks you're gone. You have completely left him, you've abandoned him, he doesn't understand it. So peekaboo is just literally moving out of the room and showing back up, hey baby, good, and rewarding them. So stepping behind the wall, literally doing, where you've got the wall and you're kind of stepping around the wall and then you're like, I'm right here, and click and say good if that puppy's quiet. Okay, it's really important that you make that transition so they understand, I'm leaving, but I'm, I'm not gone. I'm, I'm right around the room, I'm just right here. You know, if you wanna duck behind the couch and listen to the puppy and if he's quiet, thousand one, thousand two, good, and go back and give him a treat. Make sure that you click or say good when you are away from the dog, not when you are all the way back to him. What the puppy is doing when you are over here is what we're working on. Can you be quiet when I'm here? Good. Can you be quiet when I'm here? Good. Can you be quiet when I got my back to you? Good. Can you be quiet when I sit down? Good. Now I would be feeding her every time. I'm showing you how to do this. I would be clicking and feeding. Can you put the chair backwards and sit down and have the puppy be quiet? Good. You're gonna click for quiet when you're away from the dog or you're in different positions. Just work on it a little bit at a time. Um, don't stress the puppy. This is a long period of time to do because we're trying to show you how to do this five minutes at the most. And this is a great place to start when you're uh, feeding your dog. It's like take his take his dinner and it's in, in his, you want a pouch that you can easily get your hand in. It's just her dog food that's in here. So if a cup and a half I can work on. If you're quiet, you get a piece of kibble. If you're quiet, you get a piece of kibble. By the time you get done with your cup and a half, you've had a really, really good training session and take your puppy out and walk them and play with them and let them go to the bathroom. But this is a really good way to start your dog. Um, again, try to be very careful about putting your dog in a kennel and, and just leaving. It, it's not a good way to start. Um, it, you just need to get them to this point be, so they understand you're gonna be back. You're, you know, be quiet, be relaxed, be comfortable in your kennel. A lot of dogs get to the point where when you leave the door open, this is their spot, this is their house, and they will go in there and take their own naps. Um, you can have a dog bed or a blanket out in the room, but not in the kennel. Um, if you put a dog bed, again, all of those are fabric and squishy and soft. Um, you're gonna run the risk of your dog eating that and swallowing it. And even if he doesn't swallow it, he gets into a very, very bad habit of tearing up cloth. So he's fine, um, you know, you've got him, he's got his pan, he's gonna have a couple of toys in there that he can't tear up if you do have to leave him. Um, it, there's, there's a big discussion on how long you should leave your dog. Um, I personally don't think any dog should be left for longer than five hours. I think it's kind of cruel. Um, you know, we get up, we drink our coffee, we eat our breakfast, you go to work all day, and um, 
you know, you go to the bathroom whenever you want to or whenever you need to. You know, a dog, if you're thinking, oh, he can last eight to 10 hours, he's lasting eight to 10 hours because he's gonna have to sit in his own excrement if he doesn't do that. So it's not healthy for the dog. Uh, five hours maximum for an adult dog. A young puppy, I would start a half hour at a time. To, to get them to control their bladder and, and you know just work on that a little bit at a time. And then obviously putting them in their kennel when they're sleepy, when they're tired, um, after play sessions, when they don't have to go to the bathroom. So you're gonna figure out pretty quickly when your dog's nap time is. It's usually about the same time yours is. <laughs> so if you kind of take a little rest between one and three, you're gonna find that your dog's gonna also fall into the routine of taking a nap or resting between one and three. So it's a good time to get started.